And finally, after many days, we saw the sun again today, making for an otherwise beautiful evening. It was as if the sun itself had come to say, so long, Gary. We're all really, truly going to miss him. God bless his family. If you see his family, his wife, tell him us. Everybody down here at the stadium sends our condolences. I really commend uh, Action News for keeping Gary, uh, you know, having him come on and everything. And, uh, you know, right up until the end. He was a fighter till the end. Yeah. And uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, ba personally, I feel the loss. Wow. As you can see, a, a tough year for many sports fans. First Harry, now Gary. But knowing Gary, he's up there smiling and rooting for us. Like he so often liked to say on a big news night, rock and roll, baby. Rock and roll. Jim, back to you. Thank you, Dan. There was a quick clip there of uh, a picture of Gary and me at Citizens Bank Park. Uh, that was the day of the Phillies parade and the ceremony at Citizens Bank Park after the Phillies uh, won the World Series. And I will tell you something that perhaps I shouldn't. He was in excruciating pain that day throughout uh, that entire ceremony and our co-anchoring of that broadcast. Uh, the only thing that came through the television was his joy and exuberance because it was a glorious and celebratory day. That's all you saw. He was in terrible pain. Now everybody who worked with Gary or got to spend time with him has a fond memory or a story to tell. It was easy. His personality was contagious and he always lit up a room. He dominated every room he was in. Well, today, Gary's friend and former Action News colleague, Scott Palmer, who is now with the Phillies, shared his thoughts on Gary's legacy. Uh, it was easy. It was easy to like Gary Papa. It was easy to work with Gary Papa. And I, I guess in, in the last few years, the remembrances of Gary are just a man with great courage. He was a, he was a good broadcaster, great broadcaster, but even a, a greater man. And uh, to be able to continue on with his craft that he loves so much, to be able to do that in the condition that he was in, it just said so much about him in an appearance based thank you so much scott we have often spoke about the action news family and on nights like this that is especially true gary and lisa thomas laurie shared some special bonds that stretched over the years and lisa that inevitably meant some very fun times we did have some fun times you know gary came to philadelphia in action news three years after i did and i didn't know him very well at first but once we started working on action news after monday night football uh -oh. From 12.30 <laughs> to sometimes 1.30 in the morning, depending on the game, I uh, became very familiar with his sense of humor, his intelligence, and I do remember um, <laughs> our times going home, Jim. Uh, Gary decided that it would be funny if he raced me home one night. Oh, nice. He pulled up beside me on the expressway, <laughs> gave a thumbs up, thumbs up, and took off. Well, of course, I maintained the speed limit, and teased him the next day. Well, the next Monday, I decided I was going to uh, give him a run for his money. So he pulled up beside me, and I put my foot to the floor. And yes, I did. I took off. I hope none of our men in finest are f blue are watching out there. But I put my foot to the floor, and he just got so tickled about that. <laughs> he, the next day, my nickname from him was uh, Leadfoot. There and he go. continued <laughs> that for many days. And I will say that... So that's why we've been calling you Leadfoot for years. <laughs> exactly. But on a more serious note, uh, Gary was one of those uh, Action News family members like you were who called me regularly when I was out sick. And one day during my illness, I got a call at home from Gary. It just happened to come at a time when I was opening cards and other well wishes from viewers. As usual, Gary wanted to know how I was doing. He was quick to encourage me to hang in there wanted me to be sure I knew everyone was rooting for me. And then when I asked him how he was feeling, he gave me his usual reply. He said, oh, you know, Lisa, I'm all right. I'm gonna be fine. Well, I told him on that day that my youngest son had been questioning God, wondering why he would let this happen. And I asked Gary if either of his sons had had the same thoughts. He said, well, they're a little young, but I know they think about it. I told him that a viewer had just sent me something that I thought might help explain it. It was the first thing I searched for today when I got the call that Gary had passed away at 2.57 this afternoon. And it helped me put into perspective our loss. I don't know why my friend is so sick and in constant pain. 
I cannot tell him that God has reasons for sending him this terrible fate or that God must especially love him and admire his bravery to test him this way. I can only tell my friend that the God I believe in did not send his disease, nor does he have a miraculous cure that he is withholding from him. But in a world in which we all possess immortal spirits in fragile and vulnerable bodies, we must learn to trust that we can be sustained and comforted by the knowledge that our disease, our illness, they are not the will of God, but rather they represent the aspect of reality that stands independent of his will, the reality that saddens God just as it saddens all of us. I told Gary on that day, I read to him that God gives strength and courage to those who unfairly and through no fault of their own suffer pain and the fear of death. I can only help my friend remember, I told him, that he's more than a crippled body. He's more than a man with a debilitating illness. He is a man with a loving wife and children, with many, many friends, and with enough iron in his soul to remain a living person in the fullest sense of the word until the last day. That day, of course, came today at 257, and that's the way I'd like to remember Gary. I think all of us would, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Gary turned his personal battle with prostate cancer into a public crusade to help others fighting it. This weekend is the seventh annual Run For Your Life Father's Day Prostate Run. Gary served as co-chair of the race and captain of the team. The 5K run and walk raises research money and awareness for prostate cancer. This year, more than 100 of Gary's colleagues and hundreds of others will take part. We invite you to join us on Sunday morning and support a cause that was so very important to Gary and others affected by it. The Run for Your Life walk begins at 8.30 a.m. in front of the Museum of Art. You can register starting at 7 a.m. all the way up to race time, and Action News continues in just a moment. So many of you watch Gary's battle with prostate cancer. So many of you watched Gary's battle with prostate cancer over the past few years. It was April 2004 when Gary was first sharing his diagnosis with us and with you. Uh, Gary is uh, beginning treatment for prostate cancer. It was diagnosed back in August, and we've been dealing with this for since then, and we decided on the, the plan of attack for chemo. Oh, there I am in the monitor. Uh, the chemotherapy uh, a few weeks ago, and one of the byproducts is that you lose your hair, and that's it. Otherwise. I'm me. Everything's the same, and I'm really in the best shape of my life, and I got two best guys in the world to be here for everything. That's and correct. Your family. Oh, I wasn't talking about you two. No. <laughs> we made the assumption yeah. he was talking about Are there about any <laughs> circumstances where he can be, you know, <laughs> No, that's okay. Forward. We love you. You know that. We'll be back uh, with Gary's Sports Report in just a moment. More than you know. Dave, I got canceled. It's tough to say. And he said, you know what, Gary? Wrong. After that moment, Gary continued to battle the disease, but made it his mission to make sure that others were aware of prostate cancer. So many elected officials knew and admired Gary Papa, I guess because so many of them are sports fans, but also because Gary's activities in this community brought him into personal contact with the men and women who served the public. Action News reporter John Rollins is live at City Hall. John, even if you are a mayor or a governor, it was hard not to like this particular broadcaster. Not only not to like him, but to be impressed by his energy. Uh, in 28 years, he made an indelible impression on elected officials here. All of them, of course, knew him from television. Many of them bumped into him at various events where Gary would be a speaker for a charitable organization. One, Congressman Bob Brady said he and Gary may have shared a few beers in the early years of the 1980s when Gary first hit town here. All of them remembered him for his passion. There's something about a, a personality like that that's on television for so many decades and you think they'll never die. But we'll, we'll miss him and I'm thinking and praying for his, his wife Kathleen and his sons, but we're, we're gonna miss him a lot. Gary had such an enthusiasm, it was infectious. You watch the news, uh, it almost didn't matter whether our team won or lost that particular night. It was just his way of delivering the information, a certain style, a certain enthusiasm. That enthusiasm carried over to real life, whether it was tending bar to raise funds or orchestrating a pep rally. Notables noticed Gary cared. 
The best thing I like about him is that he didn't only cover all the major sports. I used to watch him on the Saturday day on the way yep. they did all the all the high school football. You know, right. that was a major thing for these kids to see them play. He was Mr. Philadelphia when it came to sports, so that loud, clear voice on Channel 6, and we'll miss him very much. The thing that's heavy on my heart is that if we had conquered cancer, which he should have a long time ago, uh, he could be alive today, and many, many others. TV folks who are on for a long period of time, they a little bit become... Quicken. Well, quite a testimony, quite a testimonial from quite a list of political heavy hitters. Live at uh, City Hall, John Rollins, Channel 6, Action News. Thank you, John. Sorry for that video glitch.